welcome back y'all to sorry rich farm so today is going to be kind of a little bit of a special video we are doing a collaboration with two other channels uh the one channel is going to be a vincent from good grub almighty and the other channel is going to be a taylor from pure living for outdoors and so we're making a cooking uh video and kind of the theme is you know stuff that we put in our freezer so we're going to be doing a rabbit uh, Vincent at Good Grub Almighty, he's going to be doing, I believe, a chicken. I don't know how he's cooking it. And then uh, Taylor at Pure Living for Outdoors, I believe he's smoking a turkey that he, uh, that he harvested. Um, so that's kind of what the, today's going to be. And I'm going to show you how kind of I cook my uh, our, our rabbit. It's very easy. Not a whole lot of ingredients, not, you know, I'm a guy, I'm not measuring a bunch of stuff, so it's pretty easy on how to make this. So, the I'm going to just explain the ingredients I have. Guys, by no means am I a chef, okay? I know maybe a lot of people may be watching, and they're pretty good in the, in the kitchen. I am not, okay? So, these ingredients, you may be looking at them like, man, he's probably butchering this thing. It's not going to be good. It's good. I've... I've cooked it for our church at Potlucks. I've cooked it for my family multiple times, and I've gotten good results. So, I mean, proof's in the pudding. All right, so the ingredients we have are going to be beef broth. Going to have two packets of just brown gravy mix. One packet of uh, beef stew mix. Going to have some potatoes. Uh, one can of cream of mushroom soup. Uh, we didn't have any fresh green beans, so we had to have a can of green beans. Have some fresh uh, corn and some peas. And then the other seasoning is just salt and pepper. And these are mainly just to your taste, however, you know, salty you like it, or however, you know, pepper you like it. Um, so that's pretty much the all the ingredients. You will need your rabbit, of course. We're just doing one full rabbit. Um, I did kind of cut it just so it kind of, you know, fit in there a little bit better. Um, but that's all the ingredients you're going to need. Very simple and pretty easy to do. So this first part, very simple. Okay, so if you're doing canned goods, uh, you necessarily don't need the beef broth, okay, because you're, just, uh, you're trying to get a liquid, you know, and that kind of helps with the, uh, the tenderness. So if you're just using canned vegetables, what I did when I first started this, just cut your cans open. And uh, so this is the green beans and just pour all the the liquid you have so if you have you know four vegetables however many vegetables you're using and they're canned just crack them all open pour that liquid in there and that's all the liquid you're gonna need since I'm using some fresh vegetables I don't have that liquid so I'm substituting it with beef broth if you don't want to do the other can you can use the beef broth also so I'm gonna use uh, some of the beef broth you don't need a whole lot. Like I said, the measurements, I'll, I'll probably say maybe, what is that, maybe half inch. Like I said, I don't really uh, measure a whole lot. But whatever about four cans of vegetable juice would be, that's what I normally put in there, and it seems to come out just fine. That'll be good. So once you do that, just get your meat and just stick it just stick it down in there okay and that is the first step that you're doing so right now we're just cooking the meat and we're gonna put it on a crock pot all right so we got our rabbit in the crock pot we put it on high for four hours okay um, I don't know what the temperature is on high, you know, for your crock pot. I don't know if it's temperatures, but ours is high. You may just have to look that up. But it's for four hours on high. And the reason I picked four hours is because I've cooked it for six hours. I've cooked it for eight hours. And the thing with four hours is it, uh, it cooks the meat. It's very tender. And what we're going to be doing later is um, at the end of the four hours, we're going to debone it. We're going to pull all the meat off. And everything and stick it back in there but what I've realized with you know six and, and definitely eight hours 
is when you pull it out, I mean, it definitely is fall off the bone, let me tell you. Like, bones are just coming everywhere, and you don't even know, you know, rabbits even had these type of bones. They're just, they just are everywhere. The vertebrae are coming apart. And what I've seen is when you're tearing and you're trying to find the meat and you're separating it, sometimes you can, you you know, they're tiny bones and you can, you know, mistaken one and you can start putting bones in your soup, in your stew. And, you know, when you don't want that in a stew when you're biting, because I've done that. And so four hours, it, it you can take it off. It keeps the bones kind of together where they're not, you're less likely to have bones in your stew. Okay, so that's the reason why I picked the four hours. It seems very good right around that time. So we're just going to wait the next four hours, and we're going to come back to you, and I'll show you the next step that we're going to be doing. All right, so as you can see, it's been four hours. We just took the rabbit out of the crock pot. And I mean, it's steaming right now, okay? It's very hot. So what you're gonna have to do is when you, when you pull it out, this is when you start deboning it. Do not just pull it out and start grabbing it, okay? It's very hot. So what I'm gonna do, you gotta let it cool down. You know, wait 15 minutes, just enough where you can, you can touch it, okay? Where it won't, you know, burn your fingers. So in the meantime, while this is cooling, I'm going to be cutting up my uh, potatoes and uh, just kind of getting things ready because, I mean, these next steps, I mean, everything just goes in. So I'm going to let this rabbit cool down and I'm going to cut my potatoes real quick. All right, so we got... All the potatoes cut up. I probably cut up a little bit more than what I need because you only need really like a can and we probably got a lot. But if you like a lot of potatoes in your thing, in your soup or stew, uh, just put however much you want in there. You like more than one other thing, just stick it in there. You can do what, pretty much whatever you want. But so it only took about maybe 10 minutes, not even. And this, this rabbit's, you know, cooled down enough where you can start touching it. And guys, it smells good. And this isn't even the best part. I mean, you can see here, this is one of the, the, uh, I believe this is the back leg, so it's a little bit bigger, but look, I mean, it just, I mean, it's just coming off the bone, okay? I mean, so it's, like I said, falling off the bone. It's not that hot. It's still a little warm, but I'm going to just try, I'm going to try me a little piece, see how it, how it tastes. I'm guessing it's probably going to taste good. Oh, yeah. It's good, and the best part's coming. So, I'm gonna just, all you gotta do is just grab all the meat, just shred it off the bones, get in the bones, and uh, just put one side all the meat and the other side bones. So I'm gonna do that real quick, and then we'll uh, come right back and we'll get everything else together. All right, so guys, I got most of it kind of pulled apart, but one thing when you're, when you get done pulling everything apart, It'll come in kind of big pieces like this and kind of, you know, depending on how you want it. But I like mine, you know, just to pull it apart just a little bit. You're not getting just a big chunk and you're spreading that rabbit around. That's just one little thing I like to do uh, when you have these big chunks. But as you can look, see, I mean, there's a decent amount of meat from here. And here are the bones. I mean, this is one of the best ways to probably get the most meat out of it. I mean, you can see this is its vertebrae like its backbone right here the rib cage and then the legs so i mean that that's all bones here's all meat and this is just one rabbit you get a pretty good amount of meat so i'm just gonna check for any uh loose bones real quick because you just you don't want to have those in your stew and i'm gonna just pull this apart and then we're gonna start adding everything together all right so let's add all the ingredients together so we're here at the crock pot and you know that's still going, so it's still hot, and it's got the, it's got that liquid inside there. And so, get your uh, cream of mushroom soup, whole can of that. Just stick that in there. Then you get your gravy mixes. 
Guys, this is pretty easy. I mean, you're pretty much almost adding everything at once, so you, it's not a whole lot of steps. You got two gravy mixes. Then you got your beef stew seasoning. Now, guys, this is just the way I like to do it. You know, I know other people have hundred different types you know what make rabbit stew this is kind of just the way I've figured out how to do it and so then I kind of just get all that incorporated a little bit stir it around so when you get that mixed up you know real good get everything incorporated and then we'll start to add in the vegetables I uh, got a can of green beans put that in there and then I got some Got some peas and corn that we got from the garden. Peas and carrots. Oh. Peas and carrots. Usually you just want a, a, a can's worth. So just kind of just pour that in. Yeah, we'll just throw it all in there. Then we chopped up these potatoes. And I'm just kind of going to add. Usually, you know, like I said, it's a can's worth. Everything's usually about a can. So I'm just kind of going to add. Until I think is good. I'll call that good for now. I'll put the meat in there and just kind of see. You know, I don't want to overpower anything with just one thing. Stir that around a little. And we'll put some of this meat in there. Guys, this looks good. Can't wait. Just give this a little stir. I might save a little bit of this. I might save some rabbit, maybe get some barbecue. Just, you know, have a little barbecue sandwich with some rabbit. This looks like it's turning out pretty good. I'll put just a little bit more meat in there. I think I might save the rest for a sandwich for tomorrow. Then the last ingredient is going to be some salt and pepper. Now I'm just going to do a little bit right now, and then this is all to taste, whatever you want, okay? If you don't like salt and pepper, then you don't have to put any on there. I like to just Put a little bit in there. Like I said, I'm a guy. I don't measure. I just kind of go off what my stomach says. Do a little salt. And then just stir this back around. Get that salt and pepper all around. All right. So once you got all those, that, that's all the ingredients. And so we're going to stick the lid back on and uh, we're going to let it sit for, put it on high for another about hour, two hours max. And just kind of watch it and to see just your consistency. If you're seeing that there's not a lot of, say, uh, liquid in there, you can add a little bit more of that beef broth. And uh, just to make it a little bit more liquidy, but you see it just, it's real, real chunky and you don't like it that way. Just, just add a little bit in there, watch it, you know, the first hour and then the last hour, you know, just see it in your consistency, what you like. But so just put it on high for another two hours and just check it every about 30, 30 minutes to your liking. But two hours is about the max you're going to really need. All right, so we're about maybe 10 minutes shy of the two hour mark, okay? But we're gonna just look in here, see how everything looks. Pretty much done, but let's just, oh yeah. You see that? Those gravy packets and the, uh, the cream of mushroom really kind of make this, you know, kind of thickens it up real good. I mean, I wish y'all could smell this right now. I mean, it smells good. Let me check the vegetables. 
Okay, so the uh, the vegetables, we like our vegetables a little bit firm, you know, have a little bit of, not a crunch, but just more firm uh, tasting. If you like your potatoes real, like, soft, like mush, and uh, your carrots that way, maybe just stick them in a little bit before we did. You know, maybe you stick them in, you know, an hour before, or just wait another hour or till it's to your texture. But for us, this is exactly how we like it, and it, Guys, I'm telling you, it smells good. So y'all are going to want to try this recipe. Right now, we're going to pack this up, and we're going to go to my parents' house just right down the road. Guys, when you're making stuff like this, you know, you got stuff from your garden, and your rabbit and stuff, you got to share that love, okay? You know, not everybody can necessarily live the lifestyle that we do, and so we always love to make a big batch of this and take it to our family and bless them for, you know, what... You know we do not everyone can can grow their own food they just sometimes are too busy or can't grow the amount that we do or raise animals in the manner that we do so we always try to make a lot and give it to our family so they can enjoy it as well so if y'all like this uh you know rabbit recipe if y'all have rabbits i would definitely give it a try it's very easy it's very cheap and it tastes very good um, if you have any personal recipes yourself, I'm always, you know, down to uh, get other people's recipes and try them out because, I mean, you can never cook one thing the same thing always. You always got to change it up a little bit. But just leave them down in the comments if you, uh, you have any recipes you like, and we'll definitely give them a try. So that's going to wrap up today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. hope it was informational. And like I said, this is a collaboration video with two other channels. Uh, the other one is uh, Vincent with Good Grub Almighty, and he's he's mainly a cooking channel. He does a lot of good stuff on that on that channel. We've been watching him. We're good friends. Um, he puts out some good content, good food, and you know, and he, and he does it on the cheap. You know, and that's you know, today's world, a lot of food's expensive. So you, if you want to get some good grub, go check out his channel. And the other channel is uh, Taylor with Pure Living for Outdoors. And we know him. We're good friends with him also. He likes to hunt, fish, and do a lot of outdoor stuff. And so go check him out. Like I said, good friend of ours. He's got some good content on fishing and everything. And he could answer a lot of questions if you have any of those. So be sure to go to their videos. And we're going to link their cooking collaboration videos that we're doing. We're going to put it somewhere on the screen, however Alex does that. Um, make sure you leave a comment in their videos. And tell them that Jacob and Alex from Sawyer Ridge Farm sent you over there. It's not easy, you know, doing YouTube and getting subscribers. So we're just trying to do as much as we can to help each other out. Because like I said, we're small channels. And uh, we just do what we can for each other. But just make sure you, you know, like, comment, subscribe to their channels. It's uh, Good Grub Almighty and Pure Living for Outdoors. And we'll link all their stuff in the descriptions and everything. So y'all take care and God bless. So, um, we're gonna, all right, I'm gonna roll that again. Like you said, I'm babbling now. So, it's not easy.